All right, so we're starting with the first video for moles. In this one, we'll mainly focus on relative atomic mass, molecular mass, empirical formula, chemical formula, percentage mass, and maybe mole conversion. So let's get started with the first MCQ. It says that the empirical formula of a compound is CH2, all right, and we know that empirical formula is related to molecular formula through a ratio. And they're saying that relative molecular mass is 70. So that's the MR. Of course, if we divide it by the empirical mass, we get the ratio that I was talking about. So let's see, we want to figure out the molecular formula of X. So for that, we need the ratio. So let's divide 70 by 14 and this will give us 5. This 5 is the ratio between the empirical formula and the molecular formula. So we multiply them the empirical formula with 5 to figure out the molecular formula. So if we do that, we get 5 times CH2 is going to be C5H10 and that's our answer. Question number 2 says that you have 1 gram sample of each compound which sample contains the highest number of moles, not of the compound but of oxygen atoms. Now here's the idea. If I know how many moles of Al2O3 I have, I can multiply it by 3 to figure out moles of oxygen. Same for if I multiply moles of H2SO4 by 4, I figure out the moles of oxygen atoms. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm first going to find out moles of this compound and then I'm going to multiply the answer by the number of oxygen atoms in there. I have one gram of each of them, which makes things pretty simple. So all I have to do is divide the MR, relative formula mass, which is one, in this case, 102. So I'll divide 102 and one gram is the mass given, so one over that is going to give me the moles of aluminium oxide. Similarly, one of this is moles of this, one over this is this, and one of this is moles of this compound. Basically, I have one gram of each of them. Now, this is giving me the number of moles of each of these compounds. I multiply the answer by the number of oxygen atoms I have. I have three here, one here, four here, and three here. If you do it on a calculator, it's really easy. Just divide three by 102, just divide one, by 84 by 98 and so on you get different values so for example i've solved all of them so this is 0 0.0294 this is 0 0.015 0 0.0408 and 0 0.0476 and you'll notice that this is the one that has the highest value so this is the one that our answer is going to be the names and formula of three nitrogen compounds are shown now notice that in the last one you have oxygen which is heavier than nitrogen but in the first two, you have hydrogen, which is lighter than nitrogen. So nitrogen is getting the massive part, the major share of the total mass. Now, let's see. Uh, to find out the MR of this thing, we just need to add up the mass of everything, which is going to be 17 for ammonia, 32 for hydrazine, and uh, it's going to be 14 plus 2 plus 16 plus 1. That is giving me 33 for the last one. All right. Now I divide the mass of nitrogen that I have. So I have one nitrogen here, so that's 14. Two hairs, so 14 times two, that's 28. Uh, one hair, so that's 14 over 33. You can clearly see that 28 over 32 is the one that is the biggest fraction. Uh, we could confirm it by dividing 14 by 17 and eight, 28 over 32. So 14 by 17 gives me 82.4% and 28 by 32 gives me zero. 87.5%. So clearly this is the one that has the highest percentage by mass of nitrogen, which means it has the least percentage by mass of hydrogen. So if I do that, this will give me 17.6 in the first one, 12.5 in the second one, and in the last one I get 9% only. So that means ammonia has the highest percentage by mass of hydrogen, while hydroxylamine has the greatest MR. So that's the one I'm going to choose. Which contains the greatest mass of oxygen? Again, this is pretty simple. All I need to do is multiply the number of oxygen atoms I have with the moles of the compound. So I'm going to do 0 0.2 times 9 here. Notice that this is 3 of oxygen and then 3 of them, 3 of the nitrate ions. So that gives me 9 of oxygen. This is going to give me 1.8. This one's going to be 0 0.3 times 4, which is 1.2. This is going to be 0 0.4 times 3, which is again 1.2. And then this one's going to be 0 0.5 times 3, and that's going to be 1.5. So clearly, this is the one that has the highest value. 
Compound X has a composition by mass of this. And where's the empirical formula? Now we have a simple method of finding empirical formula. You divide the percentage by mass, assuming that is the mass, by the AR to figure out the moles, and then you find the mole ratio. So I'm going to do 63.6 .6 over 14 for nitrogen and 36.4 over 16 for oxygen. This gives me 4.54 and this gives me 2.275. I divide them by the smallest number to figure out the mole ratio. And that gives me two and one, approximately two, so I can just round it off. And this is going to be my empirical formula. The table gives the relative filmer mass of four compounds and mass of each compound present in one dm cube of the solution. Now notice dm cube is important because for concentration, we take the mass of the thing or the moles of the thing in one dm cube. So one dm cube is the standard in which we figure out the concentration. Which solution has the highest concentration? That's pretty simple. All of them are in one dm cube. So you just need to figure out which has the highest moles and you will get your concentration. How do you find moles? You divide the mass given by the MR that they've given us, the relative formula mass. So 3.65 divided by 36.5, that's 0 0.1. 9.8 divided by 98 is also 0 0.1. 2.8 divided by that is 0 0.05. And this one's going to be 0 0.15. Clearly, any which is the one that is highest moles here in one dm cube, so there's the one. A sample of magnesium hydroxide has a mass of 4.63. We have magnesium hydroxide. Let's write the formula. I have magnesium, which is Mg2+, plus, hydroxide, which is OH-1. You cross multiply the ratio, you get MgOH2 as your formula, which has the MR24 plus 2 times 17, and that gives me uh, 58. So that's the MR. I need to figure out the moles. So mole is going to be 4.63 divided by 58, which gives me 0 0.0798, and that's my answer. A chicken egg has a mass of 60, so that's total mass. The eggshell is 10% of the total mass, so that means eggshell is 6 grams, or 10% times 60. The eggshell is made of calcium carbonate, okay. What is the mass of calcium in the eggshell? So in calcium carbonate, this is one of the very easy to calculate compounds because it has an MR of 100. So calcium is 40, so 40 over 100, that's a percentage by mass of calcium in there. And you multiply that by 10% of 60 grams. And that gives you 2.4 grams as the mass of calcium in there. So that's the one we're going to choose. The relative molecular mass of compound is 166. What is the possible molecular formula of this compound? Now, we might be inclined to calculate the MR of all of them, but here's the easy option. Just calculate the mass of the first one. If you do that, there's 4 times 12 plus 3 times 1 plus 2 times 16, and that gives us 83. Now, notice that 83 is half of 166, which means that the compound we're looking for is double this one, this option A. So it's going to be C4 basically doubled. So that's C8, 86, 04, which if you look, it is the option D. Now let's move on to theory questions. Now to find the percentage by mass, we have a pretty standard formula. What we do is we assume that we have 100 grams of this thing. And based on that, we can figure out how many moles of each of the elements we have. And then we figure out the mole ratio for all of them. So let's get started. We have selenium. I always find it easier to write the elements. So selenium, oxygen, and chlorine. Notice that I'm writing the element, not the element in the form we find it at room temperature because it's part of the compound here. So I have 9.6% oxygen. If I have 100 grams of this, I'll have 9.6 grams of this. Similarly, 42.8% or 42.8 grams out of 100. And if I add them up and then subtract from 100%, I get 47.6% percent of selenium, which is again 47.6 grams out of 100 grams. Now divide them by their AR. So for this one, it's 16. For this one, it's 35.5. And for this one, if you look in the calcul in the periodic table, you get 79. This gives me 0 0.602, 0 0.6, and 1.2. Now this is the moles of these atoms. Now I find the mole ratio by dividing them by the smallest. So if I do that, I get mole ratio is 1, 1, and two. So my empirical formula is going to be selenium with one oxygen and two chlorine. And that's my empirical formula. 
A 36.3 gram sample of a compound contains 14.4 grams of so we have the masses here we have the total mass just to make sure that we have the correct values let's add them up so if i add them up i do get 36.3 as the total mass which means there is no impurity this is the full compound now calculate the empirical formula of this compound so all i need to do is take the three elements so carbon hydrogen chlorine 14.4 grams 0.6 grams 21.3 grams divide them by the ar to figure out the moles so this divided by 12, this divided by 1. Notice that I'm dividing by 1, not 2, because this is hydrogen atoms. And this divided by 35.5, which is the relative down mass for them. I get 1.2, 0.6, 0.6. Divide them by the smallest number to find the molar ratio. And I get 2, 1, 1. So my empirical formula is C2, H1, Cl. The relative molecular mass of this compound is 181.5 to use the molecular formula. Now, how is molecular formula related to empirical formula? By a ratio. And that same ratio is the ratio between empirical mass and molecular mass. So, empirical mass of this compound is going to be 2 times 12 for carbon plus 1 for hydrogen plus 35.5 for chlorine, which is going to be 60.5. Now, if I do that, I will then find the ratio and ratio is going to be 181.5 divided by 60.5 which is 3 so that means my actual compound is C6 2 times 3 H3 Cl3 and that's my molecular formula. A 2.25 gram sample of an oxide of copper contains 0.25 grams of oxygen. Now they haven't explicitly told us how much copper you have but because it's an oxide of copper you have two elements and 0.25 is oxygen, so the remaining is going to be copper. So let me write the masses. It's going to be 2 times 2.25 minus 0.25, so that's 2 grams, and 0.250 grams. Divide them by their ARs 64 and 16, which gives me 0.03125 and 0.0156. Divide them by the smaller number, so that gives me 2 ratio 1. So my compound is copper. With two here and oxygen one here clearly this is copper one oxide anhydrous anhydrous is a term that means without water of crystallization so what we have here is anhydrous aluminium chloride contains 20.2 percent mass of aluminium now this is aluminium chloride right so it has 20.2 percent of aluminium so the remaining is going to be chlorine so i'll start by writing the elements 20.2%, assuming I have 100 grams, so I'll get 20.2 grams of aluminium. Similarly, this one I'm going to get 79.8, 100 minus 20.2. And I divide them by the AR to figure out the moles. This gives me 0 0.748 and this gives me 2.248. Divide them by the smaller number to find molar ratio. That gives me 1 ratio 3, so clearly I have exactly what they wanted us to do. A sample of anhydrous aluminum chloride has a mass of 2.34 grams. So this is a sample that we have. And they've also told us that it has this many moles. So not only have they told us the mass, they've also told us the moles of this thing, which means we can use the ratio method if you want, or we can use the formula if you want. So if I use the ratio method, then I can say that 0.00876 moles has a mass of 2.34 grams. So one mole is going to have a mass of X grams, which is basically my MR. So if I cross multiply, I get my MR. If I don't want to do that, I can use the formula that mole is mass over MR. Moles is 0 0.00876 and mass is 2.34. So my MR is easy to find when I divide 2.34 by the number of moles here, which gives me 267. Now that is my MR, mass of one mole of this thing. So I found that. Now, if I want to figure out the molecular formula, I need to figure out the ratio. My empirical formula was AlCl3, which has empirical mass of one aluminum 27 plus three times 35.5, which is going to give me 133.5. To find the ratio, I divide 267 by 133.5, which gives me the ratio of two. So my molecular formula is two times AlCl3, which is Al2Cl6. And that brings us to the end of the first worksheet on moles. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.